Hi, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and uh, this video is going to be the last of uh, sort of my week-long discussion. Um, today's the final day in and the final section of analyzing um, semiology. Um, with respect to the analysis, I'm actually going to combine uh, sections 3.1 and 3.2. Uh, I get two hours of video on my uh, on my little flip. And I don't think it's going to take as long as two hours to give the lecture. It'll probably be like an hour and change. Um, but this will conclude the discussion so that we'll have gone through all uh, 16 pages of the analysis. Again, if you're looking to, to um, especially for this, uh, this particular section of the lecture, it's very, very sort of heavy with symbols, most of which I'm not going to draw on the board because I have the, the images represented in the PDF. So I would recommend, strongly recommend that you download the PDF, just click the link that pops up, click the link in the description field, it'll take you to the PDF, down it, download it, and you can uh, follow along. Um, so again, this is the last section of uh, the analysis, and this is this discussion is sort of Lacan's discussion of the uh, Oneric Rebus, and I'll talk about um, I'll talk about what that is and how it pertains to uh, semiotics. All right, so this is the final section. This is intro to semiotics. And this is section section 3.1 through 3.2. All right. Again, so I'm going to I'm going to uh, from page 14 to page 16 collapse it all into one one lecture. All right. So the Oneric Rebus. That's the title of the section. All right. So the Oneric Rebus. The first thing. Um, that you should see, and this is why it's why it's really good to recognize uh, le sort of a Lacanian role in uh, semiology, is that I mean Rebus is sort of prototypically, canonically represented um, in semiological discourse because of the Rebus's relationship to meaning. And for those of you who don't know what a Rebus is, I'll, I'll draw up a very simple uh, Rebus now. So this is this is a Rebus. Okay, so what we actually see um, is we see S, T, A, the number 4, N, C, E, right? So we see S, T, A, 4, N, C, E. And this is sort of this, the primary view, right? We, we were looking at this, um, and we recognize that it is a signifier, right? It's pointing us to something else. What it's pointing us to is something that you cannot identify within the structure of what I've presented, right? You cannot identify what the signified is, right? What the signification of STA for NCE is, because, I mean, literally by itself, it's meaningless, right? What we have to recognize is that within a rebus, it's the component parts of the rebus that give us meaning. This is exactly what Lacan was saying in the example that I gave you of the cloth, right? The power of the cloth transcends human existence. Um, nowhere is the signification of the power of the cloth transcends human existence found in any one of those signifiers. It is only within the connection of signifiers. Lacan says that we're going to look at a signifier, signifier and its connection to other signifiers to have an understanding of the signification, the meaning. The first thing to recognize is it, it is incorrect to say that Lacan does not place emphasis on the signification, or for Lacan, the signification is unimportant. That's categorically false. Um, and it's not even the case that he places more emphasis on the signifier. That also is false. What he's saying is the traditional Sorcerian algorithm, where we have that which is signified on top, and that which is the signifier on bottom is, is too, at least my interpretation, is that this is too simple of an articulation of the function of semiotics and semiology. Why? Because it really is the relationship between signifiers that we come to have an understanding of its signification. Um, and as I gave you, he goes into a discussion of metaphor, the role of metaphor and the role of metonymy in, in proving this point. The other role is the role of the rebus. 
right? So if we look at STA4NCE as a signifier, we recognize that what it is attempting to signify, what it's signified by, is for instance, I N S T A N, right? The number four is inside of S T A N C E, for inside of stance, right? So for, for instance, is signified by its signifier S T A for N C E, right? What this is showing you, excuse me, what this is showing you is that the the, the rebus as general, and this is a very very simple rebus. They have far more complicated rebuses than this, right? Um, this is the, the governing function of psychoanalysis and psychology, right? So that the best discourses in psychology, psychoanalysis are, are rooted in some extent, either firmly or tacitly, to sort of semiological discourse. And why is that? Because within semiology, we see that, you know, it's, it's, it's I mean, to be sort of colloquial, to be sort of general, it's deeper, the, the meaning of the signifier is deeper than what's initially presented, right? It stands for this, S-T-A for N-C-E, stands for something that isn't really um, to be understood or to be addressed within the signifier, right? It's, it's the connection between, right? So we see that, oh, well, really what's being said is we have S-T-A, the number four, N-C-E, that we recognize a number of things, that the number four is inside, we have to recognize that stance is surrounding, right, and we recognize, oh, well, by conjoining these two notions, I can get the, the signification, which is for instance, right, so for instance is the signification for STA for NCE, right, this is, this is a very sort of general conception of a rebus. The term oneric just means dream state, right? And obviously, psychoanalysis is sort of built on the interpretation of dreams, right? It's not many people who do... Uh, Freudian, Freudian psychoanalysis is sort of out of fashion in the psychology community, um, and there's more sort of uh, neuro, neurocognitive discourse, but I don't really think that it's, you know, the two points are speaking past each other. I think you can do neurocognitive discourse and also have um, a recognition that a lot of this needs to be understood or interpreted, given meaning, within linguistic concepts, right? The whole point of um, psychology, the whole point of what I do, conflict resolution, the whole point of basically anything you want to do is, is, is rooted in our understanding of discourse. 